When you look at the night sky, you're seeing the visible light that shines from stars, planets, and galaxies. But there's a hidden universe out there, one that radiates at wavelengths we can't see with our eyes. Today, astronomers are turning their attention to the low frequency range of the radio spectrum. Here, they can study events occurring as close as Earth's ionosphere and as far away as the most distant reaches of the universe. This low frequency regime is also one of the last frontiers in astronomy, requiring detectors that can reach out through the interference caused by all our modern communication systems. Phone calls, radio talk shows, broadcast TV, and many other communications frequencies interfere with the faint, naturally occurring cosmic signals from objects in space. To get away from all this radio frequency interference, astronomers are heading to one of the last few radio quiet preserves on the planet, the Western Australian Outback. There, an amazing new type of radio telescope is taking shape. It's called the Murchison Widefield Array, the MWA. It's a sophisticated collection of small antennas that scan the sky to study the low-frequency universe. Dr. Colin Lonsdale is the project leader for the MWA, which is being developed by a consortium of institutions in the United States, Australia, and India. The MWA is a low-frequency radio telescope of novel new design uh, that will work in the 80 to 300 megahertz frequency range. That's, that corresponds to wavelengths of between 1 and 4 meters. And uh, this is an area of the radio spectrum that is very poorly explored and so there's an awful lot of potential for new scientific discoveries with the MWA. The MWA will be uh, built in outback Western Australia where the population density is extremely low, almost non-existent. This allows us to build in a location where radio frequency interference is, well, it's not a non-existent problem, but it's a far lesser problem than it would be in a more populated area. So the MWA is a novel type of telescope. It's known as an aperture array. That means that uh, instead of uh, a paraboloid reflector or a mirror, uh, you have an area of ground where you put receptors or antennas and spread them out across the ground and then capture the signals from each of the antennas and combine them electronically. By doing this, you can actually steer the telescope in different directions on the sky without anything physically moving, simply by changing the way that you combine the signals. Each of the more than 8,000 MWA units is a dipole antenna. These dipoles are grouped together on metal mats called tiles, and each tile contains 16 dipoles and associated electronics. They are all connected by wiring to a central data collection point. When the array is fully built out, there will be 512 tiles constantly collecting data from the sky. So let me show you an example of one of these antennas that, compri that comprise the MWA telescope. Uh, this is uh, a dipole antenna. It's a very simple little thing. Uh, you just assemble it by sliding these uh, antenna wings into these slots. I can manage it. There we go. And, uh, in the, uh, in the middle here goes uh, 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 some electronics, actually amplifiers. The signals are picked up by these metal sections and then amplified in here and sent out along wires that come out the bottom. And then uh, they go off to be turned into uh, streams of numbers, digital data streams. And that's uh, where we then 
use massive modern computational number crunching power to transform the data into uh, images on the sky. What sets the MWA apart from other arrays, aside from its design, is the chance that it gives astronomers to look at the universe in what has been a largely unexplored part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Because this is such an unexplored regime, there's a lot of new and exciting science to be done. There are three major areas of research for the MWA array, and they range from the very nearby to the far reaches of the universe. By looking at the way that radio waves propagate through the solar wind that fills the space between the Earth and the Sun and beyond, we can learn novel things about the way that the heliospheric environment behaves, and we can learn about space weather and the way that the actions of the sun interact with the uh, environment of the earth and cause things like aurora and magnetic storms. At the other extreme, at the, at the farthest reaches of the universe, further than almost any astronomical technique has seen so far, we can look back to the epoch when the very first stars and galaxies were forming and heating up the environment and ionizing material in the early universe. It turns out that hydrogen, which was abundant in those times, emits radiation at a wavelength of 21 centimeters. That radiation gets stretched out by the expansion of the universe until by the time it gets to us, it's right in the same frequency range that the MWA will be sensitive to. And this gives us a window into a period of the universe that hitherto has been completely invisible to us. The MWA can also continuously study the sky to measure low-frequency signals called transient radio events. These are emitted by such objects as gamma-ray bursters and radio supernovae. The array is doing double duty as a science facility and as a pathfinder for such upcoming projects as the Square Kilometer Array. This giant farm of radio telescopes is planned to start operating sometime around the year 2020. Its collecting area will cover one square kilometer, and the antennas will be sensitive to frequencies between 100 megahertz and 25 gigahertz. Lessons learned from the MWA's deployment will be extremely valuable during the design and construction of the square kilometer array. While the MWA is still under construction and the Square Kilometer Array is still in its design stages, scientists are already looking forward to the new discoveries they'll make with these arrays. I think the thing that's most compelling about the MWA is the, the amount of new scientific ground that it's anticipated to break. It's orders of magnitude more sensitive than anything that's gone before in a number of different ways and the sky at these frequencies is chock full of interesting things. There's no shortage of things to look at, it's just that up till now it's been very difficult to get a clear view of those things. With the new technologies that we have in the MWA, all of these remarkable phenomena will snap into focus. And furthermore, as these things snap into focus, many other things that we never knew about will become visible to us. So. All of us working on the project uh, really, I think, anticipate uh, a lot of startling surprises and uh, remarkable new phenomena.